Hi guys, please like, share and subscribe and contact this number if you want full lectures of any CM or CS subjects. Thank you. Okay, hello and welcome guys. In this video, I will start off by discussing force of interest. Okay, and I will continue our discussion on uh, what we had done in the last video. Uh, we had ended off by uh, discussing the nominal and the effective rates of interest and then we had just uh, discussed a few formulas relating to accumulation and uh, discounting factors relating to nominal and uh, accumulated in uh, relating to nominal and uh, effective rates of interest and their equivalence we had uh, seen how to convert one into the other one okay so now let's just start off with this uh, if you have an interest rate of 10% per annum let's say okay then you can find the equivalent uh, interest and discount rates as follows so your uh, effect uh, equivalent interest rates will be these which are uh, given on the left okay so uh, you have got uh, i1 which is the same as i as 10 percent i2 is 9.7618 percent uh, so on and so forth you can see as the value of p is increasing ip is reducing and it's reducing at a decreasing rate okay you can see in the first case uh, the decrease in P was just one okay but uh, your uh, decrease in I was of 0.24 about 0.24 right 0.24 percent and if you see in the last case where your uh, uh, P increases from 6 to 12 but the dis difference in uh, IP is just of uh, 0 0.04 right so uh, as P increases IP reduces but it reduces at a reducing rate right decreasing rate okay in case of DP if you see uh, your uh, discount rate it uh, increases with the increase in P so your DP will increase but it also increases at a decreasing rate so you can see in the first case uh, your discount rate uh, increased by a very high margin but in this last case your uh, discount rate uh, increased only by a very small margin okay so if you see in general you can see that the interest rate is increasing and the discount rate is decreasing and both are increasing and decreasing at a decreasing rate so if I just draw this diagram how does it work so if I take the discount rate it uh, the diagram would look somewhat like this okay it is just increasing right but but it is increasing at a decreasing rate your interest rate if you draw it is falling it is decreasing but it is also decreasing at a decreasing rate right and you will realize that they are all they are both they'll be equal at a point when p will be equal to infinity okay so that is the limiting value for both so you have your ip curve here you have your dp curve here and this is your p okay and you realize that as p will go to infinity they will limit uh, reach this limiting value which is called as the force of interest this is represented by delta okay so yeah that's how it works okay delta is basically equal to i infinity or d infinity okay it is either you can call it ip when p tends to infinity or you can call it dp when p tends to infinity right and it's the limiting value for both so you'll just realize that if i uh, check oh, what is the order of these so delta comes in the middle and uh, you will have rates which will be greater than it which will be all the interest rates so you will have i12 then you have i9 okay all the way up till i and on this side you will have uh, the d rates d12 d9 let's say d4 okay so on and so forth up till the smallest one which will just be d okay so that is the uh, you know the order of these d is the smallest i is the largest and delta is right in the middle which is the 
force of interest this is called as the force of interest now let's try to derive the formula for it okay so to derive the formula for force of interest you need to know the eulers rule which is just uh, limit n tends to infinity 1 plus x by n whole to the power of n is e to the power of x this is the definition of e to the power of x okay so now let's uh, just do that so your accumulation factor for uh, a nominal interest rate compounded pthly is just 1 plus ip by p whole to the power of p right now here what do you want you want the formula for i infinity or you want the accumulation factor for i infinity right so what you will do is you will take a limit p tends to infinity that's what you'll do infinitely times compounded okay so that's fairly straightforward so what does this become this just becomes e to the power of if you see the equivalence i p okay and p here is infinity so e to the power of i infinity i'll write e i infinity as delta so e to the power of delta okay so that's how it works so basically and you know this is uh, this can be equated to 1 plus i because this is the annual accumulation factor in case of a compound uh, annual interest rate okay so 1 plus i so that is how it works and delta can be found out as the log of 1 plus i okay so that's how you find out delta right so that's how you derive uh, the force of interest and uh, to think about the force of interest logically uh you can think about it like that the compounding is happening uh, infinite times okay it is happening very frequently like daily or uh, hourly or uh, every minute or something like that okay so it's very fast compounding usually it is used to approximate uh, when p is very high so it can be used to approximate ip or dp when p is very high right so it can be like you can use it to approximate weekly or uh, daily compounded uh, nominal interest rate right so that's how it works okay now let's just uh, move on to the questions or something okay okay so let's start off with these questions the first one you have got is 500 euros is invested in an account that pays a force of interest at 8% per annum this is the value given for delta okay calculate the accumulated amount in the account after 3 years so yeah your force of interest is this now let's see how do we accumulate so your accumulation factor if you remember it accumulation factor would become c we have already discussed that 1 plus i is the equivalent of e to the power of delta right so your accumulation factor for n years would be 1 plus i to the power of n which will be e to the power of delta n right which is quite obvious and your discounting factor would just be the reciprocal of this so e to the power of minus delta n this is your discounting factor right so that is how it works now let's just do this so 500 invested uh 3 years okay so times 0 2 times 3 you are just investing 500 okay you want to find the accumulated value so your accumulated value will be equal to 500 into e to the power of 0.08 times 3 right so this is your answer what will it be this is just 635.624 um uh, in euros right let's move on next one is uh, a payment of 800 is due in 5 years time calculate the present value using a force of interest of 9% per annum so your uh, present value will be equal to 800 discounting for 5 years so e to the power of minus 0.09 into 5 right so that will give you your discounted value so 800 into e to the power of minus 0.09 times 5 simple 510 dollars 510.103 okay that's your answer next one uh they are telling you that delta is given as uh, 8% calculate i i4 and d12 okay that's easy so e to the power of 0.08 that is 
let's write it formally first e to the power of delta will be equal to 1 plus i it will be equal to 1 plus i4 by 4 and in the third case you can equate it to 1 minus d12 by 12 whole to the power of minus 1 okay so yeah that's how it works so I've just equated the accumulation factors in different cases and you can just find them directly so I will do one of these for you the rest of them you can try okay uh, right so this one is just uh, e to the power of 0 0.08 is equal to 1 plus i this is the first case in just firing die directly I will become eight point three two percent eight point three two eight seven percent okay second uh, equated to this uh, okay one plus i four by four okay so how will that work it would just be e to the power of point zero eight minus one okay uh, there was also a to the power of four here and this will be to the power of uh, minus twelve so yeah so yeah you will just write that this way and uh, right so this just becomes i4 just becomes 8.0805 percent which you can see if you want to verify the value always you can check it should be greater than your force of interest which it is and it should be less than i which it is next is d12 okay this will be a smaller value so d12 you can find uh, right so it would just be equal to by using the above formula that i had written it would be equal to it's 7.9734 percent yeah so that's how it works and the other questions you can try by yourself okay so yeah let's not waste time on those okay so these two you can try by yourself okay all right then okay let's move on so one thing I don't remember if I have told you this so far or not but this is very important 1 plus i to the power of minus 1 that is 1 upon 1 plus i can be written as v uh, which is also same as 1 minus d okay so this is usually written as v so when we discount anything when you discount uh, using uh, the compounded annual discount rate uh, interest rate you just write uh, pv is equal to accumulated value into 1 plus i to the power of minus n this can also be written as accumulated value into v to the power of n this V is just uh, the reciprocal of 1 plus I okay so that's one thing that you need to know now uh, there's this table of expressing uh, everything in terms of everything else so you've got Delta you've got I you've got V and you've got D how do you express them in terms of each other so let's look at them one by one first one I'm telling uh, uh, I'm taking Delta in terms of uh, I I V and D right so in terms of i we have already seen it as a uh, log of one plus i uh, now in terms of v it will be if you see since it is log of one plus i delta is log of one plus i this is established which is the same as saying it is log of it can be written as negative log of uh, one upon one plus i right which just means it can be written as the negative log of v okay so that's fine uh, then you have got then V is also equal to 1 minus D so it can be written as negative log of 1 minus D okay so that's also a definition for Delta so just remember this next one uh, if you see I in terms of everything so I is equal to e to the power of Delta minus 1 this can be proved using this definition uh, if you see Delta is equal to log of 1 plus I if you take uh, both sides in exponential it just becomes e to the power of delta is equal to 1 plus i right and i is equal to e to the power of delta minus 1 in terms of v v is equal to 1 upon 1 plus i we have already discussed then uh, what will i be i 1 plus i will be equal to 
1 upon v and i is just equal to v to the power of minus 1 minus 1 right so that's fine yeah and uh, again v can be written as 1 minus d so it would just be 1 minus d to the power of minus 1 minus 1 okay that's fine next one is uh, v in terms of all of these so v is just uh, 1 plus i to the power of minus 1 which can be written as e to the power of minus delta one year's discounting factor right so it's just the same thing then you have got it is same as 1 plus i to the power of minus 1 it is 1 minus d that's all established for d again d is equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus delta so how why is that so you know that e to the power of minus delta which is one year's discounting factor is just equal to 1 minus d so d is just equal to 1 minus e to the power of minus delta which is fine again okay move on um, d is i upon 1 plus i we already know d is 1 minus v right because uh, v is uh, just one year's discount factor so v is uh, 1 minus d so d is 1 minus v right so they can all be converted into each other okay so that's one thing to note okay 